You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Hey, I'm Brock. I'm Dolby. Welcome to Wednesday. I do want to say... Apologize for leaving you hanging. Tomorrow I will be off. I'll be, we'll be running solo here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, what are you? Why are you con again? Well, my sister is uh, a lot more smarter than me, uh, <laughs> as evidenced by the <laughs> a lot more smarter. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> she is. Uh, she's going to the bar tomorrow. She's uh, officially finished with law school. She's, she's graduating the bar. She's not going to the bar. That's what they call it. They call it going to the bar. Really? Yeah. You you go to the bar. Oh. And then you pass the bar. That's I what they assumed call it. there was more to. It because go, saying my sister is going to the bar tomorrow, so I need the night off, sounds like a really bad excuse. There's to get a difference from when I go to the bar yes. and when she goes to the <laughs> bar because she's a lot more smarter than I am. One of you goes to the bar to spend a lot of money. One of you goes to the bar to lose a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the long run is is that if I go to the bar and I mess up, yeah. then because she went to the bar, she can help me out because oh, she's a lawyer. There you go. You see that? <laughs> see? Wait, can I finally? have your sister's number? What if I go to the bar and make a mistake? This sounds like a you problem. I think I get the friends and family discount. You just get the, like, I don't know, pay for it, I guess. Secondhand friends? Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how that goes, and I don't know. It's going to be weird actually going to someone's graduation where it's like, it matters because like, oh, I went to yeah. radio school. I didn't even go to my graduation because I didn't think it mattered. But. I'm not 100% sure I'm an official graduate. I went on a work placement. I never got a diploma or really checked in with my college ever again. I may technically not be an alumnus. I'm pretty <laughs> sure going to college for radio is basically like just helping you get your first job because like no one has ever asked me in an interview for proof that I went to college. Right. Like your sister as a lawyer is going to have like her diploma on the wall is proof she's allowed to do this. Whereas if someone wants to see our diploma, it's because they're trying to make filters for joints. Yeah, I think mine's like a PDF and an email. Like, that's where it sits, dude. The Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Yesterday I came home from work and Courtney was like all distressed in the backyard with the dogs. Uh-oh. I was like, what's going on? I forgot. Monday, Mm. we took the dogs to the vet, and since they're getting older, we took some blood work just to see how they're doing. Uh, And they told us that first thing in the morning, uh, we needed to get a sample of their urine and a sample of their stool. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, typical, like, as you're getting older, these are the things you got to give the doctor, so it makes sense the dogs need it, too. So I come home, and Courtney is chasing Murphy around the backyard. (laughs) She's got a Tupperware (laughs) container. Trying to catch Murphy's pee. Oh, no. And our dog just refused to go pee. She's like, I've been out here for an hour and a half with the dog. (laughs) Just, dude. Every time she'd go to squat, Courtney was trying to put it down, and the dog was looking at her like, what the hell are you doing, man? I mean, to be fair, if you couldn't communicate to me that that's what you were trying to do, and you were just like, every time I went to the bathroom, you were sneaking in there, I'd be weirded out, too. Yeah, she's like, Silas was no problem. I was able to sneak up on him and get it real quick. <laughs> so she's getting frustrated and she's like i gotta go to work so i'm like okay so Dude, now it's your job i was there with her for like another hour oh my god she would not go pee <laughs> i'm trying to do that thing where i'm like all right i'm looking at my phone Playing like, cool. i'd go inside and i'd close the screen door and she'd stand there and as soon as she'd go to squat down i'd come running at her oh yeah and she just she'd stop She'd stop. Well, yeah, because who oh. doesn't appreciate someone stampeding towards them when they go to take a pee? <laughs> and then, yeah, finally, I just, like, I sat down, like, on the deck, and I actually started getting distracted on my phone, and then I mm. saw her, and I just I just ran over, and I snuck it under her. Nice. One of our Tupperware containers just full of dog pee. Just a tub full of pee. And then, uh, and then so I finally took her for a walk, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I need that stool sample. And so what mm. they give you for that is it's like a vial Mm -hmm. but uh on the lid it's uh it's almost like like a baskin robin sample size spoon oh okay yeah yeah, in there so i was walking the uh, the dogs and murphy finally takes a dump Mm -hmm. and (laughs) i get down and i'm like cutting this turd (laughs) this spoon charpootery and there's some guy walking (laughs) up ahead i was going what the hell is this hey how's it going (laughs) As I'm trying to get the perfect slice to get into this like tiny little vial, man, it was the weirdest, it was the weirdest thing I've ever had to do. The the thing is, uh. you have to play it off like it's normal. Like yeah. you can't. 
As the other person is walking by, you can't just start spouting off your dog's medical history to try and make this make sense. Mm. You just got to hit him with the, hey, man, yeah. have, have a great day. Oh, Enjoy yeah. your walk. I'm cutting a slice. <laughs> and it had to be small because it could fit in the, oh, too descriptive, I guess. But uh, <laughs> And then I just had to carry this thing in my pocket for like 30 minutes as we're on our way back home. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's not like when you pick up after your dog and you can just fire it in the nearest trash can. Oh, yeah. You've, <laughs> no, you got to keep that thing on you. And then I had to drive it to the vet. Oh, my God, man. I didn't realize I had the AC blasting, like, onto the floor. And that's mm. where I put all this stuff was on the floor. Oh, so now you got, like... Oh, just a waft of dog dirt just <laughs> coming through the entire car, man. <laughs> really takes the edge off the heat of the pee, though. Yeah. Right? It really cooled it down. Oh, my God. Like, I love my dogs, but it was the most frustrating morning yesterday. Hey, so most of the time when it's, like urine sample stuff like that obviously they give you like a little sterilized cup or whatever yeah you for the dogs chose to use tupperware no well we had to catch it in the tupperware to right. pour it because there's no way you could have caught it in that oh, little cup okay there's okay. no way you could have snuck up behind the dog and been like aim it in here right like. right right okay well that changes the question but it's still the same outcome what did you do with the tupperware oh i threw it out. okay and that's just hey I needed to know just from if I was ever going to come over for dinner. I was like, I, we could keep this, we could wash it, but every time I ever use it, I'm going to be right. like, this is the dog piss Tupperware. I don't think you could wash it enough. Yeah. I don't think there is a cleaning material that you can have like in a home that will clean Tupperware of... The memories of dog pee. I just wish we had security <laughs> cameras in the back to get the food. Like, Courtney <laughs> was chasing it broken when I got home. <laughs> she was so frustrated. I can't think of a better option, though. Like, the only other thing I can think of is, like, taping the Tupperware to the <laughs> to that part of the dog. I, I don't know. I was starting to think, like, do I put a plastic bag in there? And yeah, I'm like, yeah, how yeah. do I dump that out? Those like, dog diapers that you see when the dogs really get up in years. I just wonder what the dogs <laughs> talked about that day. They're like, what are they doing? Why man? do they keep doing First this yesterday, they're putting thermometers in our butts. Now they're trying to collect our pee. Like... <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> this is why we need to invent the technology to be able to talk to our dogs. Not only to hear their stories and their thoughts, but to be able to explain to them medical procedures. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. I've always loved the NFL, uh, the way they get the refs to get on the microphone and announce like penalties and stuff like that because it gives the referees some personality. I love that they've started doing that with hockey over the past few years too. That's been huge. Like once they put helmets on all the refs and you kind of lost that the, the visual personality, giving them the mic again really has brought that back to the forefront. But I've been watching a lot of the, uh, the, the Euro and the Copa, the soccer tournaments, sorry, football tournaments that have been happening. And, and those refs are just head of the game for personality without having to say a word. Dude, they're dramatic as hell whenever right? they draw like a red or a yellow oh, card. God, watching like two players are like beacon back and forth and all of a sudden this dude in the yellow jersey just like swoops in like a flamenco dancer and snaps off a yellow card. You're just like, that guy is a lot. They hold like a dramatic <laughs> pause like they're an anime character. Yeah, yeah, right? And they start like pointing at different people, waving their arms around. Their whistles are even like uh, they're very flamboyant about it, that's for sure, yeah. I would love that if that kind of energy spread to other referees and other sports, but it also got me thinking what if we did away with HR departments in uh, different like job sites and job scenarios and just replaced it with a soccer referee <laughs> running around your office snapping yellow and red cards on people who yeah, are making yeah, violations? Yeah, that could work. That could work. Imagine you're in the break room. You find out someone just took like your food out of the fridge or something like that. You're getting into an argument, and all of a sudden some dude in shorts just comes running into the break room yellow card and then he just twirls away back down the hall it'd be a fine line between what's a yellow card and a red card though that's where you have to like decipher the difference that's the thing i think that you know red card in soccer you really got to go above and beyond to break the rules or it has to be multiple offenses i think you'd mostly get yellow cards in an office situation mm -hmm. like you'd have people being late maybe parking in somebody else's parking spot that could be a yellow unless you start doing something weird and you're like rubbing someone's shoulders and they're like right. oh that's a red card <laughs> that's a red card that's right a red card yeah. sending inappropriate emails through yeah. your work email you hit reply all that's a yellow card that's yeah. hey yeah. first time it's a yellow card listen it happens to the best of us but if you're a serial offender you're just going to get 
an email back from the referee with an attachment that's just a JPEG of a red card yeah. telling you you can go home for the day. <laughs> I do like the idea, actually, of the football referee of, like, throwing a flag on the play if you see something. Oh, yeah, 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 to bring in, like, some NFL stuff. It's style. got, like, that weird little sand, and it just floats up and drops down. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, that the, is that, like, the sports equivalent of whistleblowing? Mm. Like, you see your boss is, like, using company funds? But then again, if you're going to do this, I feel like it should be, like, sports where you should be able to challenge the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just it, right? So the yeah, the ref comes and gives you the yellow card for whatever it is you did. You throw your challenge flag in the office. We go to the instant replay, which, as we all know, is just the security cameras. Mm-hmm. We watch the replay, and if you are, in fact, guilty of the infraction, your yellow gets turned into a red. Sure. But if you're innocent, you get a paid day off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It comes out of the referee's salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to pay for it because he's the one that made the wrong call. You get to go home and watch Price is Right all day. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. The Brock and Dobby Podcast. I think what you could start doing with this whole red card, yellow card thing, mm. start using it at parties, actually. Ooh. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you now, spill a drink, that's a yellow card. That's uh, Your first one's free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a yellow, like a warning, mm. for sure. Do it again. You're going to have to be asked to leave. Or if you're like the one person who keeps refusing shots, Mm. that's a yellow card. But also, if you're the same person who's just forcing people to take shots. That's a yellow card. There's a happy medium here. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. You could do it at house parties. You catch somebody smoking inside your house. Like, that's a yellow card. That might be a red card for me, actually. Depending, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You catch somebody, if you you got like upstairs bedrooms, you catch somebody upstairs in your bedroom. That's a a red. You got to get out of here. Changing the song when everyone's jamming out Whoa. halfway through and that's borderline yellow red depending on if you do it more than once yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah that's easy the second offense is a red card for sure uh showing up empty-handed how are we feeling about that is that a yellow or is that a red card depends on the gathering if you were told like hey just come on over i'm doing a barbecue i've got food and drinks and stuff then obviously yeah come on through if it's if you were just invited to a party and you didn't bring anything i think it's a yellow card and if it said BYOB on the invite and you showed up, that's a red card. Yeah. That's, I think there's levels to this. <laughs> Anyone who's just shouting constantly. Right. Hey, the music's not even that loud. Why that's are a you yellow screaming? card for sure. Uh, fighting's a red card. Fighting is a red card for sure. <laughs> and, and, th- and a suspension for future events. And I think if, okay, we could agree if pu- puking's an automatic red card. Puking? It's an unfortunate red card. I feel bad for you. You're having a rough night. But you threw up in my house and now you have to leave. <laughs> This yes. is the Brock and Delby podcast. Saw so an ad for back to school shopping and got very confused as to what day it was. Get out of here. Back to school <laughs> shopping already? <laughs> like, my, my kids still have two days left of school. How are we doing back to school shopping That's already? That's just wrong, dude. Please tell me it wasn't Staples. I'm pretty sure it was. What? I'm fa- and, hey, listen, if you work for Staples and I'm wrong, feel free to text into the show and tell me. I'm gonna do it, bro. But I'm pretty sure. I'm ringing the bell. <laughs> Shame. Shame on them for having back to school ads. And it's not even July yet, dude. dude. Do you think that's bad? Back to school technically should be like August leading into September. I saw an ad for Black Friday deals from Best Buy. What? Coming up for July. What? I saw that flyer. Isn't that like November? Before. Yeah. Black Friday is the day after American Thanksgiving. Well, Best Buy gets one too then. Shame. These days don't make sense anymore. Mm. Like Black Friday sales, it used to be, what was it? Boxing Day here in Canada. Yeah. Black Friday was the big one down in the States. Yeah. And then... That was ba- oh Boxing Day oh wait no that's what I f- Toyota Thon I guess <laughs> dude Toyota Thon and Employee Pricing Days those are the ones that started this whole thing mm-hmm. I feel like that's the the origin story of disrespecting the calendar when it came to sales in the states I will say with their holidays they go a little more gung ho than us because they'll be like it's Memorial Day sure. it's whatever day yeah, like, m- Memorial Day President's sales day sales seems weird dude right? I've seen them have like Martin Luther King Day sales and I'm like that one's a <laughs> little <laughs> dude yeah. i've seen 911 sales all right we've seen those commercials that have gone viral wasn't it like wasn't it like subway or something that had the weird deal on like 911 the one year was that a meme 
I don't remember Subway. I do remember a mattress franchise down in the States getting absolutely devastated because they did an ad of two people leaning on mattresses oof. getting knocked over. That's a big oof. For a never forget sale. How can we... Does anybody do Canada Day sales? I feel like I haven't seen that in the flyers. You know what it is? I feel like just everything's closed on Canada Day. True. Like I don't... I feel like the only people that do any kind of sales is like dollar stores, dollaramas selling mini Canadian flags. They should call it like the sorry sales event. <laughs> it's like just maple syrup and bagged milk on sale. The let me squeeze right by you sale coming at the brick this weekend. You can only get deals on ketchup chips and Caesar mix. <laughs> Smarties. Smarties are 50% off. The Canadian Tire Sorry Bud. <laughs> the change in the Chesterfields <laughs> sale on right now. Got shovels, snow blowers, and hockey equipment. <laughs> and all if, 50% off. And if that's not enough for you, sorry, we'll find you something else, eh? The Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Someone hit us up on the text line here, 762 said. If you were to give yourself any advice when you were graduating high school, what would be the best advice you could give yourself? Mm. The real world sucks. Yeah, honestly, it would be hold on to these moments. It's not going to get better than this. I think the biggest <laughs> thing like, I'd go back and tell like anyone who's graduating high school is like, you don't know anything right now. That's just it. Yeah. That's honestly just it. Hell, I'd go back and tell myself that at the end of my college days. I think, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, I think your views and opinions change like three times over, at least for me since I've graduated high school. I feel mm. like I've changed my identity or like what I think and stuff like that. Oh, for sure. Uh, but also, I mean, most people that are older than you are, are also wrong as well. So like everybody doesn't know what they're doing. That's the biggest thing you need to know. Yeah. Because becoming an adult is like most of us are just flying by the seat of our pants right now. It's, like, it's two things mixed in one. One, nobody knows what they're doing. Mm. And two, it's okay to admit when you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, don't trip out too hard because nobody <laughs> knows what they're doing. That's just it. And there's too many people that are just like, I can't admit to it because if I do, then everybody will look down on me. And no, everybody else is going to go like, oh, finally, someone said it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that it is okay to fail, obviously, yeah. as long as you don't like let that like slip you up kind of thing. Like Honestly, I'd rather fail early. Yeah. Get it out of your system. The last thing you want is to think that you're perfect and make this True. long run. Now you're in your you're like 40s or 50s and it all falls apart it's so hard to pull things back together and i mean in the grand scheme of things like what are you 17 18 when you graduate high school like any of the problems that you have right now yeah for the most part they're not a big deal the problems that you have right now and the people in your life right now are very l unlikely to still be around in like five years anything that you are very dramatic about right now it doesn't matter it won't matter probably in a year two years five years whatever yeah. it is which also also lends itself to the idea of don't be in such a hurry. Like I remember I was dumb when I applied to colleges. I applied to one college when I was in my grade 12 year, didn't get in and had to sit out a year before I could go to post-secondary education. And oh my God, my parents and I were just like, oh, my life is ruined. That's a whole year that I'm going to fall behind all these other people. And now here I am at 40 looking back and being like, what is one year? One year is nothing. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a bunch of parents shaking their head right now, but it's like, I mean, you don't you don't really need to go to school after you graduate high school. Like, you, no. you can go explore. You can. I know there's parents that are like, don't say don't that. Don't say that. But it's true, man. Like, I think there's also, there's a difference between like, hey, take a year to like get some work experience, go do some traveling, get that stuff out of your system versus like, you don't have to go to school. You can watch The Price is Right for a year. Yeah, well, I mean, and it, it doesn't have to be traveling. Just get some damn life experience, yeah. even if it's just in random jobs. Right, 100%. Like, if you've got an idea of what you want to do for a career, but you don't want to start right away, go just get a job. Go get a job and experience what the workforce is There is nothing is like. worse than talking to people who have no life experience. Oh, God. And you can tell immediately yeah. as you start talking about certain things, they're, they're just clueless about the world or themselves in general. Yeah, I call them the people I graduated with that are still in Hay River. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to leave your hometown either, I guess, that's is a big a, thing. Yeah. That's a big thing. Those yeah. city limit signs are not an invisible fence. You are allowed to leave. Uh, but the best advice I could give to anyone graduating high school, wear a condom. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? Sometimes you just speak a level of gospel that should be idolized. That's honesty, man. That is the absolute truth. And if you take one thing away from this show today, it was that. (laughs) The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Did you see that Boston Pizza has decided to give away the 30,000 pizzas today, even though the Oilers lost in Game 7? Oh, are they? They've, They've changed it. Instead of it being, we're going to give 30,000 pizzas out in Edmonton to celebrate the Stanley Cup, now it's they're going to give away 30,000 pizzas countrywide, but mostly in Edmonton, to help Oiler fans get over the loss. Well, first off, 30,000 pizzas across the country isn't as many as I thought then. No, 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 no. I assume the majority of them, like probably like twenty to 25,000, yeah. will be in Edmonton, and then they say like, Other locations, it's probably like if your local BP's manager likes you, you can get a pie today. That went from a really cool thing to a kind of smidgen of a deal. A little bit. Real quick, yeah. But I do love the idea because they're right. There are very few things that could happen to me in my life that would make me sad that couldn't be fixed by a free pizza. Oh, dude, yeah, pizza's my comfort food, absolutely. It's just, it's you know, and you can get the different toppings depending on how sad you are. Am I getting something just light because I'm, like, just mildly bummed out? Am I just piling ridiculous things on there because I need to be brought up from the depths? Pizza is the ultimate antidepressant. I will say pizza's nice, but also uh, free ice cream would have been good for anyone that's really in their woes about the Oilers right now. That goes back in, like, uh, pop culture for decades. The idea of sitting down with a tub of, what, Ben and Jerry's. Hagen Dazs, yeah. Just one tub, one spoon. I don't need a bowl. I'm going to eat my feelings today. Although, if we are talking about sadness, I mean, one of the best comfort foods, and we've talked about it before, uh, if they're having a funeral morning the Oilers lost. Should have been free egg salad sandwiches across the country. (laughs) Damn. I now wish we were doing this show in Edmonton because that would have been the perfect thing to do yesterday. Yeah. Is to do an open casket funeral with egg salad sandwiches. (laughs) For anyone who's never heard us talk about this before, for years we've been saying I don't know why, but Ah. when you go to a funeral, the egg salad sandwich just hits differently and i think it's because of the morning and yeah I, I i don't know what it is it's like, the perfect mix of the sad chemicals in your brain and the delicious egg mayo combination on the bread that just mingles to make you go maybe the world's not such a dark place after all it's really weird that at funerals <laughs> we want to eat yeah but for some reason it helps i mean it's the same thing if you're just sad right Eating Honestly. just like kills kills the void a little bit i would say there's there's pizza there's obviously the egg salad sandwich ice cream like you said and then i would say like if you needed to make a mount rushmore of comfort food soft cookies mm. you know those like fresh baked soft cookies yeah yeah as long as no one's looking and i can have as many as i need i'll feel better when it's over i cancel out your soft cookies and i just put booze <laughs> <laughs> well obviously <laughs> just put booze <laughs> booze is its own mount rushmore liquid brother. can be a food <laughs> liquid booster juice is a thing people people take a booster juice as like a meal supplement no like, one's ever been food. like oh man i'm really going through it right now can we we go to a booster juice. <laughs> People have most definitely turned to booze, though. <laughs> exactly. They need to make a booster juice. <laughs> Yeah, stop asking if I want to put wheatgrass in my smoothie and throw break a little the, vodka in there. Get yeah, me some dark rum already. Throw a little Tito's in there. I'm having a tough day. Yeah, <laughs> it makes a difference. Might not be good for you, but... (laughs) I mean, eating your feelings is not good for you in any direction. So let's get drunk. Sure, why not? Would give a whole new meaning to a juice bar, you know what I mean? This This is the Brock and Delby Podcast. Apparently. Oh, boy. There's only 125 years left on this planet. That's it, eh? Scientists are saying that there is an asteroid that they have been tracking... And in 125 years, they do think could take out our planet. Seems like we've got lots of time to do something about Does it. Does it not seem like every <laughs> year we hear one of these stories of like either it's like it's gonna happen yeah. or it's like, did you know a meteor flew by the size of 17 buses the other day? Like, I think that's the thing is like people ask like why antidepressants and anxiety medications are at an all time high in this planet. It's because you know how many 
earth level extinction events we've survived from just the media telling us like oh by the way we missed an asteroid by an inch the other day uh they are saying that yes in 125 years this asteroid is projected to hit earth which i mean (laughs) sounds like a them problem because none of us are going to be around to see it i'll let my grandkids grandkids know that they should keep an eye out uh but they are saying that this (laughs) meteor is so big that it is bigger than 99 percent of earth's objects which i don't even know what that's supposed to mean that's that's an odd just means it's big as hell america Americans will do literally anything to not use the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why they tell us this stuff. I mean, is it just, just to keep us freaked out a little well, bit? Or? And especially, why tell us this when we all know that Ben Affleck is busy and Bruce Willis is unable to do the job? We can't even send them to fix it. Aren't they supposed to figure out a way on how to stop meteors? Wasn't that a thing that was in the news a few years ago? I feel like they've been working on it, but I haven't heard any follow-up. There hasn't been any kind of a timeline of like, all right, guys, so we can now safely get rid of asteroids up to X size. Yeah. They, they, there's none of that. I always, uh, I've always had this theory that meteors is just like, you know when you, you were a kid and you'd go to a lake or a pond and you just start throwing a crap ton of rocks into the water? Sure. I feel like, what if it's just aliens throwing rocks at us and we're their pawn? <laughs> so you think, hang on. I know it's stupid. Hang on, let me try and sort this out. You think that what we perceive as space is really just like essentially the equivalent of us living in a pond and aliens who are bigger than we can perceive are skipping rocks on what we think is the universe. We live in the Milky Way, right? Uh, yes, yes. That's, that's like our river, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, I know, I know. It sounds like I've passed the duchy to the left-hand side this morning, but hear me out on this. I mean... Hear me out on yeah, this. Yeah, all right. Imagine how confused fish are sure. when you throw rocks into the water. They're just Absolutely. swimming around, do 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 Right. And then a boulder just comes dropping in. It's, it's no doosh. different than a meteor crashing into Earth. That's That's true. I wonder how many times fish have been like, yo, there's a meteor. It'll be here in 125 years. And some kid just comes along and throws a rock. I mean, in general, imagine how terrified fish are when, uh, you know, they get caught and released. Mm. That's like an alien experience for them. Well, that's alien abduction, right? They get dropped back in the water. No one believes them. Right. Instead of getting probed in the backside, they get hooked in the mouth Mm -hmm. and then sent back down to tell tall tales that no one will ever believe. Call me crazy but sometimes it all just feels like we're just a bunch of fish in a big pond. (laughs) Someone keeps throwing rocks at us. Yeah. (laughs) You know, people are going to look at you for this this take and they're going to say that you're crazy or that maybe you're on something. But I think maybe you're a visionary. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're ahead of your time here. And the only reason the aliens are sticking their fingers up our butt, it's the same way you hold a bass, right? <laughs> They're taking pictures with us. Yes, yeah, that's exactly it. Boy, I caught a human was this big. The Brock and Dolby, Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Ed's word of the day. Let's see what he's got. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, Today's word is a uh, bragger. Yeah, bragger. B r a g g a r t. Bragger. And it's a uh, it's a person who brags about possessions or achievements. A boaster. One of, you know one of them what we do kind of people. So anyways, that's about it. Have a great one. Cheers up. Bragger. Yeah, it's just someone who brags a lot. Yeah, it's like, it's very old sounding. Like. It seems like your grandparents would refer to somebody as a braggart. Sounds like some like William Shakespeare stuff. You know? Nobody likes a braggart. Tis but a braggart. Yeah. We? Yes. I, you know what? It's probably in at least That's one probably Shakespearean how it would have been play. Used, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, if uh, if you know someone who still talks about how good they were at hockey when they were mm. playing peewee, could have gone might be pro. A, they might be a bragger. Could have gone pro, just uh, needed a scout in the stands one time. I mean, in general, if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, you never shut up about how your team has won 24 <laughs> Stanley Cups. If you haven't won anything in 30 years, you might be a bragger. Easy Leafs fan. Just, <laughs> just be careful there. I'm just saying. I'm just also, saying. we are in the middle of braggart season, of course, as more and more people get out and go fishing. Mm. Bragging about them what they caught, how big it was. You should have seen it. I threw it back, but it was this big. Yeah. Okay, braggart. Uh, I'll also say this. Uh, to the sexy guy who keeps jogging by my house all the time with his shirt off, we get it, dude. You're a braggart. All right? You're better looking than the rest of us in the neighborhood, okay? Sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> Is that you with the six pack abs? I had a six pack. They weren't abs. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't share. It is officially braggart season for all of you that are really good looking, and we're very envious of you, okay? Damn beach bodies. Braggart, braggart, braggart. Uh, use it wherever you can. For more Brock and Dolby. Tune in weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by BadShop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store, with all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.